number two. For the Yellow Jackets in left field, Derek Gifford. Shortstop, Grant Pfaff. Right fielder, Tanner Benson. On first base, Seth Bowman. The DH is Landon Prestige. Center fielder, William Buford. On third base, Taylor Greiner. Second baseman, Caden Kelly. Catching is Devin Smith. And pitching will be Bryant Chambers. For the Tornadoes, shortstop, Julian Swift. In left field, Aaron Gomez. On first base, Chris Morrow. Center fielder, Colby Christian. The DH, Mason Vasquez. Catching, Efren Sanchez, Jr. On second base, Sam Ortiz. Third baseman, Matthew Arms. In center field, Zach Sechrist. And pitching, Dakota Palmer.
Well, we're back with game two real quick here. First pitch and uh, foul ball off to the right side or left side down there. So we'll have uh, for the Yellow Jackets leading off one, two, three, Derek Gifford. Working on the mound for the Tornadoes here, we'll have uh, Dakota Palmer. Foul ball over the stands here. <clears throat> Palmer comes in with a 3.36 ERA. Oh, a check swing there, no swing. So that even or gets the count to one and two as Palmer work, working quickly here. So glad you could join us here from uh, Gardner Boggs Field. A little bit outside, hitting this spot out there. Nice pitch. Palmer comes in with a 3.36 ERA and a two and four record. 11 appearances, 11 starts as uh, quickly gets ahead, but now fills the count here to uh, the leadoff hitter. Derek Gifford for the Yellow Jackets. Another foul ball over the top. Yeah, these uh, second games of the doubleheaders, they just they just got to start. <laughs> yeah, 630 uh, foul tip there. Ends up on the ground for another uh, foul ball as Gifford's having a quick long at bat here. It's Chuck Lacoste says, quick spurt start at CTX, all good. Yeah, we were up here. The party in the uh, press box was uh, got cut short here as uh, Chuck Lacotta now on QA, making us go to work here on the Big Daddy Media Network. Glad you could join us from uh, Concordia University in Austin, Texas. Another foul ball by Gifford. So he's, la he's making Dakota labor on this first. Yeah, event. that's... Pitch number 10 according to Vance Laws. Just keep a track of the uh, pitch count. Yeah, Sidearm sports so you can keep uh, track at home. Not the way you really want to uh, start have the first batter here, but let's get a out here to uh, start. And that'll be a ground ball to second base. Ortiz comes up and makes a throw tomorrow. So we look around the infield now. So Matt Arms at third base, Julian Swift at short. Sam Ortiz at second, and Chris Morrow at first. In the outfield, we'll have uh, Gomez, Segrist, and Colby Christian. First pitch swinging again. So, uh, Concordia won game one of this two-game doubleheader of this three-game series, and a nail-biter. And we're glad you could join us on this Thursday, and the reason why we're having the games Thursday instead of Friday is because of the weather conditions tomorrow. Yeah, anticipating uh, rain tomorrow, and uh, so want to make sure you get the games in on this last weekend of the season and not extend them as uh, try to make it to the tournament, and it'll start on Thursday of next week at um, East Texas Baptist University in Marshall. Well, the other thing is it is senior day on Saturday, and they didn't want to have a doubleheader on that day, and there's already been one, it was the, which, which series was it? It was the East Texas... Uh, series that they actually had to move one of the games because of rain conditions. Right. And so that that game, that one game that they actually played, they had to finish it. It, it took forever for them to finish. Is that ETBU? Was that a? Which I can't remember. Series? I think that is right. Where uh, I actually had to leave the stands and stuff due to lightning, and then try to finish. So one two pitch there by uh, Dakota is a little bit inside and low. So. Evens a count at 2-2 two -two here. And then to, they uh, had to finish the series at a different ballpark. Well, that was yeah. on the road. That was at uh, Laterno. Laterno, that was Where Laterno. we actually went to Hallsville and finished that series. That's the one I was thinking of. The one at home is when we had the uh, lightning and the yes. rain. So 2-2 two -two count here as uh, Howard Payne continues to foul uh, quite a few pitches off here and making uh, – Dakota kind of labor here, but a fly ball to center field. Segrist will come in and uh, make the catch there. So two outs, but uh, Dakota's already thrown quite a few pitches in this first inning. Yeah, over ten pitches with the first batter. and So 
It's a contrast of Otto Franz, who was very efficient with his pitches in many of the innings. Oh, not getting that call on that outside edge either. So could be for a lot of pitches in the zone here if you're not going to get uh, some of those edges called. Uh, well. Now, even though it does look overcast, it's not supposed to have any rain tonight. Right. Famous last words with Texas weather, but. So Dakota working here. So this batter is 2-1. First pitch, I'll just say, on the outside edge, did not get a call. Second pitch, on the inside edge, did not get a call. So uh, if you're going to have to throw the ball down the middle here, this could be a long ball game with a bunch of runs because nice breaking ball there. Not getting those calls. Um, zone, zone's got to expand a little bit as we get into the game and not be really tight. Ball hit out towards right center. We'll see if anybody gets to it as Segrist goes over. So wind blows it back in towards center. Segrist makes the catch. It'll be a three up, three down inning, but a little bit of laboring as uh, Dakota throws lots of pitches. And we'll go to the bottom of the first here in uh, Gardner Box Field. 0-0. Zero, zero. Hell, here we go to the uh, bottom of the first here at Gardner Boggs Field on the campus of Concordia University in Austin, Texas. And uh, Big Daddy Media Network, thank you for joining us. As uh, Get all that in real quick for the first pitch as Julian Swift steps in for uh, Tornadoes. And kind of expected, but uh, first pitch swinging. Julian does a lot. And he'll be safe, safe on a throwing air by the – Third baseman's going to make an error on that play. So. Yeah, pull the, pull the first baseman oh, off had, the bag. And yeah, plenty of time to make the throw. Took his time, but then pulled him off the bag, and uh, Julian will reach on the air to uh, start the inning. Uh, Chuck sent us during the break. Uh, Dakota Palmer star, uh, stats for the last three starts. 0-2 record, 12.1 innings pitch, 17 hits, 14 runs, 10 earned runs, 3 walks, and 9 Ks. Yeah, looking to, uh, looking to get back in uh, – good swing of things because he had had some really good starts before that and uh, real, really struggled in his last couple. So, Aaron Gomez, AG, at the uh, plate here after uh, Swift reaches on the air by the third baseman, Taylor Griner. So, uh, Bryant Chambers on the mound. For Howard Payne. Bunt foul there. So Chambers comes in with the 4-2-9 ERA. 1-0 on the year. 11 appearances, but only two starts. A little bit different role this weekend, but 21 pitches. 
I mean, 21 hits, six walks, and 13 strikeouts in 21 innings. Scomez fouls one down the line. So, hey, we got Mike Blackwell in the booth here as he steps in. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Good to see you. There you go, bringing back the hauling the uh, the little wagon there. And good to see you. Oh, ball hit hard. See what Gomez. He's going to call him safe, but the home plate umpire is going to call him out of the baseline. So uh, home plate umpire is ruling that he's out of the baseline. So we'll see. Now he's going to call him out. Yeah, so he'll be ruled out there, but uh, nice job putting the ball in play, getting that runner over to second base. And um, Gomez kind of dodged the uh, – that's twice the first baseman's had to try to make a tag. So pitching for uh, Howard Payne is Bryant Chambers. Um, nice to see him on the mound as he's a senior and uh, this weekend. So he's from uh, Katy – Texas at Seven Lakes High School in Katy. 6-1 right-handed pitcher from Katy. Are the baselines actually wider from first to third? Well, it is if you make in a direct. So if you if you decide to uh, run in the – that ball oh, is towering. No, it's, yeah, it's too high, though. But the right fielder trips a little bit, thinking it was hit That's way right deeper. For the second. So it got him off the end of the bat there, but uh, Morrow was out in front of that ball. So the baselines, yeah. Yeah, so as you're running to first base, you got the runner's lane there. And as long as you stay in that runner's lane, but you have to make a direct path. What happened is A.G. on the way down there, once he got to the fielder going to tag him out, he dodged him and went out of the baseline, which, which would have been the direct path even though he was in the runner's lane or pretty close to the runner's lane it was not the path he had taken to first base so as he runs around the tag they, he's called out by the home plate umpire initially safe by the umpire in the field because he couldn't see that call out of play by the batter's cage So two outs here in the inning as uh, Colby Christian, your cleanup hitter, bats here in the uh, first inning. Wind still blowing out to left there as Chambers comes set. That ball is hit. I don't think it's got enough in it. They'll go back towards the warning track and make the catch in left field as uh, Derek Gifford retires Colby Christian to end the inning. So, no runs, no hits, one error. And uh, we'll go to the top of the second, 0 0. So we'll go to the top of the second inning here as uh, Yellow Jackets will have four, five, six up. Seth Bowman. That ball's hit high in the air towards left center. And uh, Zach Sears goes over full extension to uh, make the catch there for the first out. So that's a nice one pitch out there after uh, really laboring. the 
call it, guys. So we have um, Landon Prestich. He DH'd or uh, he pinch hit in the first game. So he'll come up with uh, one out. That ball is hit on a line towards center field. And oh, oh Zegris dives, gosh. but it gets past him as Aaron Gomez goes, chases that to the fence. Big guy running in Prestich, but he'll get into uh, sliding with a triple at uh, third base. It was going to be a very tough William catch Beaver. trying to make that play on uh, Prestige on that hit as Segris laid out. Was not able to make the catch there, so Prestige is able to uh, get around to third base. Ball hit towards shortstop. Infield back, so we're going to give up that run for the out. So that'll be a ground ball out with an RBI by William Buford as Preston scores the run. So 6-3, put out, RBI by Buford. That ball's hit up the middle, and oh, Ortiz tries to make a diving catch there. Not able to... Uh, Come up with that one as first pitch, Griner swinging. Up to the plate, number 33, Caden Kelly, the second baseman. First pitch swinging again. So your batter now is Caden Kelly, second baseman. Eight hole hitter for Howard Payne. Two outs in the inning. Dakota Palmer working uh, working real quick here. Another foul off. I'm not for sure Howard Payne has took very many pitches so far in this game. They're swinging first pitch. They're swinging a lot right now. And Palmer, he's in the zone and around the zone. So doesn't get the call on the pitch off the plate there. So one ball, two strikes here as Palmer works to uh, Caden Kelly. Runner moving. Ortiz catches the second base with the tag. So caught stealing there. By Efron Sanchez Jr. and uh, on the throw to second base, Ortiz. So nice job there. But Howard Payne comes up with a hit. I mean, with the run on two hits, no errors. As we'll go to the bottom of the second, one to zero. Well, we come back here to the uh, bottom of the second inning. Tornadoes will have uh, Mason Vazquez, EJ Sanchez, and Sam Ortiz come up. Been an overcast day here at the ballpark as uh, the little bit of sun we has we had goes down. But uh, really good crowd as uh, see a lot of the families here and.
0-2 real quick here to Vasquez. No rain in the forecast and nothing on the radar. So. No, just really overcast. Yeah, and so uh, we're going to be able to leave the uh, outfield cam as you're able to see. Good deal. Floyd. Good deal. Yeah, overcast, uh, a little bit muggy earlier, wind blowing out. Very humid. I mean, it's going to be raining tomorrow. So the weather, the weather is like this because we're going to have a lot of rain tomorrow, which is why we're having the doubleheader yeah, today. South winds blowing in and <clears throat> blowing out to left field, actually. 2-2 count here to Vasquez. Oh, a little breaking ball left high. Mason barely misses that and fouled over the stands. Vasquez hits that ball on the ground through the hole in the right side. Nice job hanging in there on that pitch and just hitting it to the right side. Vasquez is a um, sophomore from Banquet, Texas, and uh, some of the players on the team call him Big Country, but I'll tell you this, one of the nicest, most polite gentlemen on the team, and Big Mace, Little Mace, all this, he, uh, Sanchez squares the bunt. I'll tell you this, Mason Dubois really likes that kid. He, uh, Great kid all around, very polite, and uh, good to see him in the lineup here today. Sanchez squares the bunt. They're going to make that throw towards second base, and they actually get it. A little bit too close to the pitcher there as uh, Sanchez Jr. was trying to uh, sacrifice that Instead of got the runner, ends up with the fielder's choice. Fielder's choice. So one out here as Sam Ortiz comes to the plate. Sanchez on first now, replacing uh, Vazquez. Ground ball hit towards shortstop. He's going to go over and make a good move, but uh, he gets the fielder's choice also as he's able to get into the hole, set his feet, and make a good throw to second base, but Ortiz just too fast and beats that out. So another fielder's choice here. So two outs in the inning, and uh, that'll bring up Matthew Arms. Arms playing uh, third base in this contest. Defensively, um, that's the only uh, switch to start this game. Then a switch with the DH with Vazquez hitting for uh, Braden Pick that hit in the first game. First pitch strike inside edge to uh, arms. Throw over to first and Ortiz slides back in safe. So a leadoff hit to start the inning by uh, Vazquez. He's quickly replaced at first base on a fitter's choice by E.J. Sanchez, which then is quickly replaced at first base again by fielder's choice by Sam Ortiz. So base hit and two fielder's choice, arms at the plate here. And uh, that's a little pop, reached out and just popped that ball to the third baseman there. That retires the side with no runs on one hit. And we'll go to the top of the third inning with the Yellow Jackets leading 1-0. to zero. Here on the Big Daddy Media Network.
Uh, it's probably a good thing, Leland, but that's where we're uh, no, no, it's not. checking the no. social media. So, uh, first pitch, ground ball, and Julian Swift will retire Devin Smith, the catcher in game two. So, one pitch, one out. As uh, That's how Palmer started the first, I mean, the second inning also. So, back to the top of the lineup with Derek Gifford as uh, – he has retired on a, about a 10-pitch at bat, retired on a uh, ground ball to Ortiz tomorrow at, from second base. Two nice curve balls in a row from Dakota oh, Palmer. Oh, nice pitch, yeah. That's excellent that is, that is the classic Dakota Palmer that we enjoy oh, watching. D- yeah, Dakota's, you know, he needs those balls on the edge. He's not going to overpower you. He's going to have great command. He's going to hit his spots, and he needs those calls. And he needs you to swing at some pitches that uh, are off the plate that you shouldn't swing at. Off-speed pitches. Off-speed pitches, breaking balls when he gets ahead of you. But usually it's about getting ahead and uh, making uh, making them defensive in their swings, and he's very good at that. So 2-2 count here to uh, Gifford with one out. Man, great pitch there. That's hard to lay off. Or it's even harder just to pull the trigger. I think that would have more to do with it. Great pitch on the edge and uh, right at the location he wanted. So Gifford will line that ball in the right field after uh, working a full count for the second time in this uh, and two at-bats. He just was able to get that on the screw tip on the bat and just line it in there. Yeah, Dakota kept hitting his spots. He just didn't get uh, the calls and didn't get the swing. So just really, uh, really good at bat twice by Gifford as far as uh, plate discipline. Plate discipline, swinging at strikes. and So we'll have uh, Grant Pfaff, the shortstop, up with one out and Gifford on first. That ball's popped up, but it'll get out of play off the stands for the loud noise Clang. for those that used to clanging in the crowd. So did you ever get to make it up there and uh, count the dents in the roof, Leland? I have not. You no. haven't? Oh, well, we were going to hold the ladder. Runner moving. And the tag out. Nice job there. Tag, Sanche- it, tag it by like several feet. Yeah, Sanchez got rid of the ball really quick. A little high throw, but Swift was able to uh, make the catch and get the tag down on Gifford for the second out of the inning. So 2-1 count here to uh, Faf as uh, Gifford breaking ball on the outside as uh, Dakota tries to make this uh, – a little bit quicker inning. The two at bat starting this contest by Derek Gifford and Grant Pfaff. Two of the better plate appearances and at bats. Just quality at bats. Even though they made two outs to start. That was 20 pitches. That'll be a fly ball to center field as Segrist sets underneath it for a can of corn out there in center field. Can of corn, uh, that's from Leland Freeman there, is, uh, retires the side. So That's what? actually from Mike Blackwell's, and it's okay. probably from commentators that go back 100 years. <laughs> three up, three down, but that's unconventional with the base hit and a caught stealing as we go to the bottom of the third inning.
So we go to the bottom of the third inning here from uh, Gardner Box Field. As the appreciate you joining us here on the Big Daddy Media Network with uh, Mike Dubois and Leland Freeman and Chuck Lakata doing QA in Game Two as uh, Rock and Rev Randy Fry did Game One. Strike call, a little late on the call, but uh, swing and miss on first pitch, and then a called strike on the second pitch. So. 0-2 here to uh, Zach Segrist as he leads off. Pitch outside from Bryant Chambers. Swing and miss on an off-speed pitch to uh, retire Segris on a strikeout to start the inning. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this. So I uh, got to see um, in between games, got to see um, Shane Lawler in the crowd, and uh, great to see him back as uh, we knew Rachel wasn't here because we didn't hear her during that first game, but uh, she wasn't able to make it in. She's handling a lot right now as uh, – there you go. Julian Swift hits that ball to right field. He's going to get a single. But uh, in between games. That's the Julian we like to see. There you go. Going to opposite field also. Like, that's a uh, understanding what they're throwing you, and they're keeping those breaking balls outside. So, one out single there by Julian. But in between games and uh, talking with Shane Lawler a few minutes. So, great to see him. Great to see him out. And. To my surprise, um, probably the biggest smile of the night, Jess Lawler was able to be here for game one. So great to see him. Been through a lot this last week, and a lot of love goes out to the Lawler family. And just um, Jess came in, had a doctor's appointment, and able to uh, come in and watch game one. So they started heading back. and Ball hit to... It's going to go back, 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 back. He makes the catch in left field as uh, that ball kept, got up in the wind stream and just kept going out to left field. Almost sent it on the warning track out there after uh, it looked like just a typical pop fly to left field by uh, Aaron Gomez. But... Uh, we definitely know the Lawler's family is uh, tuned in and great to see them and um, all the well wishes and from the last week. And I'm sure uh, maybe I didn't get to see the rest of them, probably the only smiles uh, bigger than what Jess had on his face just from being out and, and uh, getting out today was uh, probably some of the guys in the dugout. Like, hey, I, we, we were able to talk to a few guys this last weekend at uh, McMurray. And just, man, it, it, you know, I, I would just say it definitely brought the team together a little bit. You hate to see something like that happen and bad situation. But, uh, man, just love for Jess and the Lawler family and the guys in the dugout. Just, I'm sure, in the clubhouse when they got to see. Hopefully he surprised them and didn't uh, give them a lot of warning that he was coming. But, uh, yeah, great to uh, – Great to visit with them in between games. So, continued support. I thought Shane might be bringing those uh, chicken and dumplings that uh, that Rachel's been cooking. I didn't get offered any of those in between games, but we'll have to work on that. Ball hit the left field. It's going to travel back, too, as they go back, but uh, he'll retire Chris Morrow there as uh, got a base hit by Julian Swift, but retires the side. And we'll go to the top of the fourth inning with the Yellow Jackets leading your Tornadoes one to nothing.
And yeah, we're back to you here. And uh, got a real important update to give you as uh, Shane Lawler texted me and said that uh, the chicken and dumplings were gone. So disappointing here as I listen, but uh, I'm somebody, sure Rachel so hasn't forgot the uh, recipe. And Did somebody say dumplings? Yeah, we'll have, maybe have to make our way to uh, Needville the next time we smell those on the stove. I think it's one of uh, Jess's favorites and uh, great to uh, see him. So we're back here in the top of the fourth as Dakota Palmer works. Well, the humidity, so a little stick I'm needed on the bat. A little, uh, going to use the stick here to uh, get a little bit better grip as you're uh, – Dakota will be facing the 3-4-5 hitters as Tanner Benson works in the box with Dakota Palmer on the mound. Nice pitch there. Good block by uh, Sanchez and strikeout for Dakota Palmer. So one out here as Dakota works in the uh, top of the fourth and first baseman Seth Bowman at the plate. Called strike there. That's the pitch that, uh, that's the pitch to the left-hander that Palmer needs like uh, Another strike call. So uh, Seth Bowman is here with one and two count. Not really happy about that. But uh, like I said, this is that ball's a breaking ball hit. Zach Segris almost loses his footing out there as he stumbles, but he's able to back up and make the catch in center field for the second out of the inning. That is a type of at bat that Dakota Palmer gets batters into. He paints the corner a couple times, throwing his pitches, and then gets you swinging on a breaking ball that uh, not something that you can barrel up and get a lot of power on. So two outs here as uh, D.H. Landon Prestige at the plate. Landon got a triple after a diving attempt by uh, Zegris and center field so 0-2 pitch there outside edge as uh, Dakota hit his spot just a little bit off the plate as they didn't want to give Prestige anything he could barrel up a little bit high evens it up at 2-2 two and two with two outs Palmer working that was just his second strikeout and that's his third now as uh, two strikeouts in the inning in, uh, in between a fly out to center field. So he's, nice work there by Palmer. He is pitching a one hell of a game, only three hits oh, and one run. It, he just needs run support. Needs run support right here. I mean, we got to stay with it and basically. And uh, we got you on play-by-play, -play, so get some runs, Mike. There yep. we go. It's time. Uh, maybe I'll go outside and come back in for this half the inning as uh, Tornadoes will have the uh, four, five, six hitters coming to the plate in the bottom of the fourth. Here on the Big Daddy Media Network. So we uh, go to the uh, bottom of the fourth here 
as Colby Christian. That's going to be hit high into center field. Winds kind of stopped blowing, but uh, on the logo in center field is first pitch. Colby Christian's retired. Yeah, the tornado's just having uh, haven't been able to um, barrel a lot of balls up. Like I said, coming in, like Chambers comes in with a 4.29 ERA, but only two starts on the year and, and 21 innings. Both games have turned into a pitcher's duel. 312, uh, another pop. This will be in the infield as the shortstop is coming in behind the mound to make that catch. So two pitches, two outs. So what causes it the, the pop up? Is the pit is the uh, batter early or late? Well, a lot of times, uh, like the ball hits the center field, he you know he probably had decent timing on that. He just got under that. I mean, as we talk, sometimes, boy, I'm hearing all this noise in the uh, stands, and then I turn to look up and. Uh, for all of y'all that know Jamie, um, that has to be uh, the family because they have a lot of people in from California, expecting some in from uh, Colorado. And I would say uh, EJ has probably a good little over a dozen here already today. Yeah, I mean, he and they're had, looking for a hit. And a lot of these people are coming in expecting the game tomorrow before the. Uh, the coaches decided to move it up because of the weather. Yeah, tough travel plans there. So glad, uh, glad they can make it in. Know the rest of the family for uh, Sanchez will, will be in for Saturday. As uh, that's a uh, towering. That ball gets hit pretty deep, deep to uh, left center field as they go back and make the catch. So three up, three down on three flyouts there. As tornadoes retired in the fourth inning, and we have had not a lot of activity. Two hits, but no runs as we're down one to nothing. Okay, as we return here for uh, top of the fifth inning, first pitch swinging again. That'll be lined in to uh, left field by William Buford for a single. Next batter, number nine, Taylor Grant. So Buford was uh, 0 for 3 in their first game today and uh, 0 for 1 today before, or in the second game before that leadoff single. Boy, it looked like we missed that call there, and uh, that's that's where Dakota needs the uh, pitches there so he can keep guys off balance and off the zone. Throw to first base. So leadoff hit by Buford. Now we'll have Taylor Griner at the plate, and he had a single in his first plate appearance. Uh, so far, the uh, Yellow Jackets have out hit the Tornadoes 4-2. to two. Three and O's the count now for Dakota. (laughs) 
Called strike on the outside edge there. I think he had one about uh, six inches in on the first pitch and didn't get the call, and uh, now he got that call. Chuck says I question those a lot, but that'll be ball four there as Dakota got behind the grinder. So first two guys reach here in the top of the fifth inning. Mokery comes out. Yeah, after struggling a little bit and laboring uh, in the first inning with a lot of pitches, got out of that three up, three down. We'll uh, we'll be back to you after the mound visit. Return to uh, Gardner Boggs Field here with Mike Dubois and Leland Freeman with Chuck Licata. <laughs> well, they're booing us here in the press box. We left the music on, and but hey, ain't the first time I've saw that. We saw it a few times last weekend, and Yeah, the PA announcer, Gay, she decided to uh, leave the music on because she was worried about uh, Sam Hartman and how beautiful his hair was and if he was getting a commercial. But uh, that's okay. We s- <laughs> oh, the ball gets away as th- pickoff attempt by Dakota Palmer. And the runner got between Julian and the um, – Throw. Now, how is that not considered runner's interference? Because he's got the uh, he's got the way to the bag, so he he gets the right to the bag okay. to be able to get back on. Usually, you want to see those guys dive in, and you won't have that problem. But uh, yeah, definitely right there. So that's going to be an error in that runner advancing. But so one one count here to uh, Caden Kelly as the uh, first two runners reach on a base hit and a walk. Had a mound visit, and then Kelly hits a ball towards center field. It's going to be a tag up at third base, but runner at first has to go back. So, so they get a uh, sack fly there. Gabe said run rule score. What's the story of that? The run rule? Oh, we're not going to worry about that today, are we? Run Said a run will score or something out of the PA. Oh no, run will score. Oh, run will score. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, run scored there on the sack fly from Caden Kelly, and that'll bring up Devin Smith here as uh, it's the catcher batting in the nine hole. Grounded out to shortstop last time with one out and a runner on first. Dakota Palmer looking for um, another ground ball to shortstop. See if we can turn them. So one and two pitch. Ball low and inside with the breaking ball. Evens the count at two and two. So top of the fifth inning, and Howard Payne has uh, added another run. As so far today, pretty good pitching here this inning, having a little bit of trouble, but one out and uh, Palmer on the mound working. And But the uh, offense so far has been anemic. Foul towards the third base coach's box. As uh, Tornadoes through four innings, they only have two hits on the board. So Devin Smith at the plate with a 2-2 count. Palmer comes set. Strike three. 
fourth strikeout so far on the day for uh, Palmer. Be the second out of the inning. Still have third baseman Taylor Griner on leading off of uh, first as Palmer works to uh, Derek Gifford. Gifford grounded out to uh, second base on about a 10 pitch plate appearance and then he uh, singled. Another foul, 0-2. Earlier in the contest, we had uh, kind of mentioned that there was a caught stealing by EJ, but that was a third pitch strike called by the home plate umpire. So no caught stealing on that, but it added to the strikeouts. And that'll be another strikeout there as uh, Palmer gets two in the inning. So in the fourth and fifth inning, he's had two strikeouts. But they have one run on one hit and one runner left on. As we go to the bottom of the fifth, Here Yellow on. Jackets lead 2-0. to zero. Here, on the, Big Here Daddy. on the Big Daddy Media Network. Yeah, we go to the uh, bottom of the fifth inning, and we'll have seven, eight, nine as Sam Ortiz leads off. First pitch strike there on a the ball uh, on the outside edge. So Bryant Chambers continues to deal out here for Howard Payne. Working quickly here, zero and two. Watching some of the um, at-bats so far, the Tornadoes just have not had many quality at-bats. Continue to swing at some balls out of the zone just like that. That's a 0-2 pitch, but that's two feet off the plate just about on a breaking ball outside. And uh, in these situations, you try to work yourself back in the count just a little bit by taking. But he took that one on the outside edge, fastball. After the breaking ball, I think the fastball surprised Sam, and Chambers gets a strikeout to start the inning. But you got to put some quality at bats together here. As we only have two hits so far, and uh, quite a few first pitch swinging, and just a, not a lot of hard contact yet. As Arms popped up to the uh, third baseman earlier. And he'll pop up for a second time here. As, you can uh, actually see with the, with the camera froze. With the exit trajectory. Yeah, right now we're just we're swinging at his pitches. I mean, that's, that's not a good pitch to swing out on the outside edge there. You didn't get nothing around on it. Some and plate discipline. Yeah, like that. Yeah, a pitcher right now. I mean, he's in the fifth inning. He's at 44 pitches now as Vance helps us out there. and 
Chuck will be uh, proud of us as uh, he's usually on me about not not keeping up with that. All the credit to Vance Laws there as uh, SID at Concordia here works with us in the box. Zach Segrist. That'll be a ground ball up the middle. See if it'll get through. Yes, it does. 0-2. Breaking ball there as Segrist is able to hit that ball back up the middle for a base hit. So two out base hit there for Segrist. And that'll bring up uh, Julian Swift. Like to uh, give a shout out as, uh, as Swifty's uh, James Swift dad was at the game, and uh, I know he's always watching. Uh, boy, that ball's hit hard, but that's going to be straight at the center fielder as he really barreled that ball up. First pitch swinging there, but uh, yeah, James's dad was at the game earlier and got to see. I uh, think he's from up north and don't get in a lot, but uh, glad he could be here and uh, watch Julian this weekend. So we'll go to the uh, top of the sixth. Tornado's down 2-0. Shortstop, Grant Pfaff. Well, we'll go here to uh, the top of the sixth here as Dakota Palmer will face 2-3-4 Grant Pfaff at the plate. So as I gave the shout out there to uh, Swifty's grandpa, Larry Erickson from uh, Westville, Pennsylvania as uh, you can depend on something from, uh, let's see. Just on time as Julian Swift goes behind second base, makes the play for a nice little web gym there by Swifty as uh, he, nice range to uh, get that ball after Dakota tried to backhand it off the mound. So one out there as uh, Grant Pfaff grounds out to Swifty. First pitch swinging again as Tanner Benson's retired three unassisted by Chris Morrow. So now we'll go to um, Yellow Jacket first baseman Seth Bowman with two outs here. Yeah, you can count on Chuck Licata to bring you some stats. And that ball's hit towards center field, and we'll see and know it's going to get down in front of Zach Segrist. So being in the middle of the lineup here, Segrist was playing a little bit deeper, and uh, that ball gets down. So Landon Prestige, who uh, scored the first run for the Yellow Jackets after a triple, will come to the plate, two outs, and Bowman on first base for the Yellow Jackets. Dakota Palmer with the first pitch strike. Foul ball, that'll be off the concession stand roof down the first base line. Yeah, great crowd this weekend, even for a Thursday. As, uh, man, just lots of people in the stand. Strike out there by Dakota Palmer to retire the side. Good job coming back after the base hit for the strikeout. And uh, we'll go. Yeah, the bottom of this sixth. And hopefully you can get some run support for Dakota Palmer. Yeah, let's hold it here for just a minute and, and talk about that. So, uh, man, watching Dakota and just really seeing he he was hitting his spots early, but they were just fouling a lot of balls off. 
Now they're making some contact, but you see a lot of soft contact. But the thing also is if you look at Dakota, he does not get flustered. He just basically stays focused. He is grinding away. He's striking, he's striking these guys out. He's getting these guys out on ground balls, fly outs, you name it. He is keeping this team. He's doing what he needs to do. Two runs. If he had run support, would this, he would be having an a, a exceptional game if the Tornadoes would just score a few runs. Yeah, you get to a quality start with uh, two runs through six innings in the MLB. That's a quality start. So, uh, yeah, not yeah. every game could be a shutout. Yeah, but we're getting shut out. Offense has been anemic so far. And, uh, you know, you need something. You need these guys to uh, regroup here offensively and uh, see if we can get something going. But you got to give some credit to uh, Bryant Chambers on the mound for Howard Payne. He – you know, he's done very good, but we've swung at a lot of pitches that, uh, you know, plate we should have took some. Yeah, we not very good plate discipline. plate discipline. Yeah, so you'd definitely like to see better plate discipline, take some pitches. I mean, he's barely about 50 pitches through uh, five innings as we go into the sixth, and he'll be facing the two, three, four hitters. But let's get back to Dakota for a second. Excellent hitting his spots, doing a really good job. Making them, you know, he had some long at-bats in the first inning or so, but really making them swing at his pitches He's and hitting his spot. He's focused. Yeah. That's the point is that that's what makes – And that game. hasn't been the case the last few games. As, like Chuck said, his stats have not been very good the, the last three games. So it's good to see him with the bounce-back game here. And we just give him some run support. Now, that ball looks low and outside, but he gets a call as some of the crowd moans about that one. So, uh, A.G. Aaron Gomez, one of your uh, seniors that will be uh, walking on senior day. That ball's hit into left field, and it's going to go all the way to the second. I mean, all the way to the left fielder there as uh, he's able to go back. So, line drive into left field there for the first out. So, Tornadoes with two, three, four here, and One out to get started quickly as uh, Chambers continues to work. So that ball's hit down the left field line. That's going to get down and be extra bases for Morrow as he bounces off the wall. Rounds first, yeah, yeah, one hopper off the wall and left field line, and Morrow will go in with the double. So I was just getting ready to say we had the three, four guys coming up, and. Uh, if they get a good pitch to hit, they're going to hit something hard. So, hit a lot of fly balls as uh, before that. If you look at the uh, two, three, four, five hitters, we've been retired seven times on fly balls, and most of them have not been hit real well. So, it's time to. Uh, you got to get the ball down, hit line drives, ground balls, find a way to get balls through the infield and uh, not trying to launch the balls here as Gardner Boggs field. Maybe playing like a launching pad today, but not you're just not hitting the ball very hard off chambers. That's a one hopper, but short hop by the third baseman. Almost handcuffed him there, but he was able to come up with the ball and make the play. The first base to retire, Colby Christian. Well, we'll have a uh, pinch hitter here. So Vasquez, one for two. And uh, had a good base hit in his first plate appearance. But he'll be pinch hit here as Braden Pick. comes to the plate. Pick was one for two with an RBI and uh, in the first game today. So 
So Pick hits one foul. So 0 and 2 real quick to Pick as uh, Chambers works here. So we'll give a quick shout out to uh, Rachel Lawler who just checked in and great to uh, have them on the line. O2 pitch from Chambers coming in to pick. Ball low and outside. So that's just our fourth base hit as Morrow got the uh, double to get on second base. So two outs here. Inside there is uh, inside and high as Pickett kind of dives in a little bit, and he hit that one off the helmet in game one, but glad to see nothing serious there. And uh, he's worked it to a 2-2 count here with two outs, runner on second base. Good take there, good discipline at the plate as he's able to work back in the account. After being down 0-2, he's worked it full here. That's a little number there as that was should have been ball four and pick swings at that low ball and just nubs it back to the pitcher and he'll retire the side. So he gets through six innings here and the Yellow Jackets still lead two nothing. So welcome back here to Gardner Box Field as we uh, Dakota Palmer still on the mound here as he continues to uh, work efficiently the last few innings, but we're in the top of the seventh here, and he's just been out dueled so far by uh, Bryant Chambers. Excellent job by him on the mound. Leading off this inning is center fielder William Buford. He's ahead in the count, 2-1 now. Got Leland Freeman heading out to uh, retrieve the outfield camera. Ball hit towards third base. One hopper to arms, and he'll make the play over to first. Yeah, the type of game that uh, Bryant Chambers has had so far. Hopefully his parents are here, but at least tuned in and uh, some of the Howard Payne crowd. So that will be a fly ball on the first pitch to Taylor Griner as he's retired. That will bring up the second baseman, eight-hole hitter, Caden Kelly. Two quick outs. That ball's hit foul down the left field line. <laughs> Two outs here. 0-1 pitch. 
That ball's dubbed kind of into the bat. That's over to Swift, and that'll be a, out tomorrow to retire the side. So quick inning here in the top of the seventh by Dakota Palmer, but still has no run support as the offense has been uh, limited only four hits on the day. Well, we'll go to uh, bottom of the seventh here after a little seventh inning stretch. Hopefully, uh, guys have decided to uh, let's get these bats rolling here in the bottom of the seventh as Tornado's been limited to only four hits by Bryant Chambers. Probably, uh, probably one of the most important things that you'd say about his performance so far is no walks and no hit batters. So we've had four base runners. That ball is hit down the third base line. The third baseman is able to get over, and he'll make the one-hop throw to first base to retire Sanchez. One of the better hits as far as uh, he did hit that ball hard down the third base line. So Sanchez retired for the first out here in the bottom of the seventh. And we'll have Sam Ortiz. Chambers continues his limited you to uh, four base runners. Four hits so far, and with one out here, Sam Ortiz at the plate. Ball inside. So quickly, uh, after I would said no walks, anything so far, he falls behind Ortiz 3-0. and After a lot of the soft contact we've had so far, I'd, yep, ball four inside. Definitely taking one there. So Ortiz draws the first walk of the game and we'll have a uh, coach's visit to the mound Well, really quick uh, mound visit there by the coach after the first walk of the game here by uh, Bryant Chambers. We'll have a pinch hitter for uh, Matthew Arms as uh, Mason Dubois steps in. First game of the doubleheader, Mason was one for two with an RBI and also had a sacrifice. So he'll step in with one out and Ortiz on first base. Breaking ball from Chambers for first pitch strike. Oh one pitch to Dubois. Another strike on the outside edge there. Oh two.
coming in after sitting in there for seven innings. Got to kind of be uh, ready now and gets behind 0-2 here as Chambers works. Ball outside and low. Took a really nice breaking ball in that first pitch, then strike on the outside edge for 0-2 count. Now he'll see if he can work his way back in as Ortiz on first base. Oh, and that ball looks like that's off the edge, and he's going to get the call for strike three. Well, that's a strike three call off the edge of the plate there and a uh, tough situation and and that at bat as uh, Mason questions the call on the way back to the dugout. So Ortiz with the walk. And that'll bring up uh, Segrist with uh, runner on first and two outs. Might look at trying to find an opportunity here to uh, find a pitch he can run on. And that ball is. He's running, and that ball's hitting the left field. And he makes a great dive and catch out in left field as Derek Gifford dives and catches that ball by Segrist. So great job there, but uh, no runs on no hits. One walk, but. One runner left on. We'll go to the top of the eighth. Tornadoes down, two to nothing. Well, we'll have a defensive replacement after uh, pinch hitting for arms in the uh, bottom of the inning. Mason Dubois will come in at third base. Dakota Palmer returns here in the uh, top of the eighth. Falls behind to the first batter, 2-0. Sure, we're probably having guys uh, in the bullpen, but that's going to be lined in the right field in front of Colby Christian for a singer. single. So Devin Smith leads off with a base hit here in the top of the eighth inning for the Yellow Jackets. We'll see what they're going to do here as uh, looks like that might be the night for uh, Dakota Palmer as he's had a really good appearance but just no run support. So Clint Mokery out to the mound. We'll be right back on the Big Daddy Media Network. Well, after the quick mound visit, or extended a little bit, probably uh, Coach Mokri 
letting the bullpen get a little bit of work here. But uh, Dakota Palmer is going to stay in and face the left-hander, Derek Gifford, after a leadoff single. Gifford looking to uh, bunt here. So Gifford, ball loose behind home plate, waiting on somebody to pick that up real quick. So Gifford fouls that first pitch off, so 0-1 here as he'll probably continue to uh, square the bunt, and he does. That ball's bunted foul as Dubois is charging from third base. Pretty intimidating there as he's looking to uh, – Try to make Gifford bunt that ball towards first and uh, bunts that ball foul again. So quickly 0-2 here from Palmer. It's not expecting uh, them to continue to bunt here with Gifford. He's one for three in this game. That ball's hit towards second base. Ortiz will go to Swift and it'll be too late coming back tomorrow. So they're going to question interference on that as they got no slide as the uh, runner went straight in towards uh, Swift. So Coach Mokery is going to ask for clarification there. So ground ball to Ortiz at second. Kind of has to wait till the runner gets past him, but he makes that throw into uh, second base to Swift. Should have saw him run out of the baseline or slide into second. He didn't either. And uh, but he not going to get the interference call here. Don't expect them to uh, change that. As umpire kind of signaling that he did make an attempt to uh, get out of the way of the throw, but nice play there by Ortiz to be patient and go ahead and get the uh, lead runner there. We've seen that call on us two or three times. It go against us, actually, at uh, McMurray. And uh, so not going to get a change here, but Dakota does retire or get one out there as uh, Gifford hits into the uh, fielder's choice. So runner on first still here as uh, Grant Pfaff comes in 0 for 3 fouls off as uh runners moving on that play so runner in motion and uh maybe a hit and run on that first pitch ball outside even the count at 1-1 So Palmer works here one and one with one out. That ball's fouled off the foot of Faf as he uh, falls behind here one and two. Ball off the outside edge. Seen it called both ways so far in this ball game, so uh, Dakota didn't get the call on that pitch. Two and two count, runner on first. Breaking ball in there, just fouled off the mitt of Sanchez. Two and two count here as uh, Palmer works. He fills it up here. Full count from Palmer as he comes set. That ball is hit into left field. Gomez will come up and get that on one hop. 
That'll be a single for Faf as uh, runners on first and second now. Bring up the right fielder, Tanner Benson. It looks like that'll be the last batter as uh, Coach Mokery's already made the call to the bullpen here as Palmer uh, works into one out in the eighth inning. We'll be right back here on the Big Daddy Media Network. Well, we have a new pitcher here for uh, the Tornadoes as Brady Statler will come in. So good to see Brady get some work this weekend as uh, one of the seniors that will walk on Saturday and comes in with the first pitch strike about a foot outside. Just calling it like I see it. Gay giving me a little bit of trouble over here in the press box. Swing and miss, 0-2. Just a little outside. Yeah. Having trouble seeing. We're looking at the uh, white lines and the Statler working 0-2 here, getting ahead. Good swing and miss by Brady Statler for the strikeout. Great job coming in. After two hits in the inning, and runners on first and second, needed a strikeout there, and Statler comes in, three-pitch strikeout. Great job there. So two on with two outs, and that'll bring up Seth Bowman. It's what you like to see out of the bullpen as Statler comes in, and he's just pounding the zone right now. Another strike as Sadler's came in and thrown five pitches and five strikes so far. Actually giving a sign from uh, Sanchez out of the zone here as an 0-2 pitch. Looking for uh, Bowman to chase something. Swing at your pitch here. 
not give him something, he can make contact in. Fouled off, out of play. Fastball outside. As I was saying, you throw a lot of strikes. 0-2 count. Need to work off the plate a little bit. Don't give him something he can barrel up. So, Seth Bowman at the plate. 1-2 count. But Brady Statler. Swing and miss. Strikeout. Good job by Brady Statler. Come in to get two strikeouts to retire the side. Leave those two runners on base so uh, nothing else is charged to Dakota Palmer here. As we go to uh, the bottom of the eighth inning, and the Yellow Jackets lead two to nothing. Well, we'll see if we can uh, get a rally started here as we uh, go to the top, bottom of the eighth, I mean, bottom of the eighth. And we have um, one, two, three up as Julian Swift will lead off. And just got to give a lot of uh, a lot of credit here to uh, Bryant Chambers. But Tornadoes have been just really aggressive swinging at his pitch and have not hit a lot of balls hard. So, You'd like to see him be patient this inning a little bit and swing and hit some balls hard and make him have to challenge you. Chambers comes in through seven innings, had thrown 72 pitches, so just over 10 pitches an inning and quite a few one-pitch at-bats from the Tornadoes that just haven't been quality at bats. Has hit a lot of balls in the air and just not competitive at bats in some of these situations. Foul off the catcher's mass to even the count at 2 2. Julian one for three on the day with reached on an error, E5, and then uh, base hit. And a fly out to center field. Looking to find his way on to start the inning as it's just 2 nothing. Full count here. Yep, looking for a base runner. Can't do it all yourself. Looking to find a way on. Got to swing at good pitches and see if uh, Julian can get something here. He can barrel up or uh, take for a walk. That ball's barreled up a middle just like we asked for. Nice job there by Julian. Worked a full count. One of the few quality at bats so far in this game for the Tornadoes, but that gives you a chance to put runners on base with some big bats coming up. Only 72 pitchers, but pitches so far coming into the inning. But uh, Chambers. You have Julian on base with no outs. Yeah, no outs here. Leadoff runner on. And uh, – What's really surprising is that with with the one error, and uh, that's actually the fourth time we've had our leadoff guy on. That ball's going to be 
Dunked over there over the shortstop. AG been hitting that ball a little bit hard out there to left field. He decided just to dink that one in in front of the left fielder that time. And now you got the first two batters on in the with bottom no, of the with eighth With no inning. outs. With no outs. No outs. And uh, and you're at the three spot with Chris Morrow due up. So we'll have a quick mound visit. So a little strategy here as uh, after the mound visit, they leave uh, Bryant Chambers in, but Concordia decides to use their offensive timeout and take a little bit more time. So uh, got the first two runners on here to uh, start the bottom of the eighth and Chris Morrow at the plate. Stepped off that time due to uh, probably time on the pitch clock and needed uh, to go ahead and step off and make that throw. Oh, Chris Morrow got him a pitch to hit, but he was a little bit out in front of that, just a little bit too aggressive on that and uh, looking for a chance to stay back on it a little bit. Had a double. Down the left field line in his last plate appearance. Ball hit hard. First baseman dives and he makes the stop. He's able to get the out at first, but both runners are able to advance. So a couple of hops to the first baseman. Good play by him to keep that in the infield. Morrow retired three unassisted on that play as uh, now two runners on base. And they intentionally walk Colby Christian. Intentional base on balls there to uh, Colby Christian. Which I question that because now if well, that is the um, I mean, go-ahead run. If he walks, it's a force in uh, RBI walk, you know. Yeah, swing and miss there. Home plate umpire just didn't see that attempt there. Right. And had called it a ball, but check swing, swing and miss there by uh, Braden Pick. So bases loaded with one out here as uh, – you're looking to do a job here and put something in play. Another quality pitch there by Chambers as the uh, crowd definitely getting into it here is uh, one of the first real threats in the ball game for the Tornado. So bases loaded here with one out, bottom of the eighth inning, Braden Pick at the plate. 0-2 pitch, was breaking ball off the edge. So we have Julian Swift on third, Aaron Gomez on second, and Colby Christian on first. One out, Braden Pick at the plate. Fouled back there.
Last play to parents. Pick hit one off the end of the bat, just nubbed it to the pitcher. Was retired 1 3 on that play. Boy, that was a close little thing there. So that little foul ball, but the catcher tried to catch that to where it would be in play. Actually came and touched home plate and then touched the batter, which would have been a quick double play and got out of that inning. But ruled foul ball as it uh, was touched before it got to fair, fair territory. Another foul back here. E.J. Sanchez is in the on-deck circle. One-two pitch to pick. That ball is hit towards the shortstop. Oh, and he throws that away. Two runs will score there. And that ties the game up. That'll tie the game after a, a base hit by pick with an error throwing the ball into right field. So that'll tie the game here. And that does several things. That means that Dakota would not be charged with a loss. Yeah, definitely. You tie the ball game up here. Brings up EJ Sanchez with the tie ball game here in the bottom of the eighth with the chance to uh, – one runner on first and third. Colby Christian on third. I'm going to go ahead and put the idea here. Sanchez squares to bunt. Definitely expecting that. Takes the breaking ball high. So base hit by pick. Ball thrown into uh, right field by the shortstop for the air. Uh, allows the second run to score. Sanchez squares the bunt. This will be a safety squeeze here. EJ trying to get the ball down. He gets it down, but the pitcher flips that ball. And they get the out as Colby Christian did not attempt to score on that with uh, ball too close to the pitcher. Colby Christian trying to read that to see if he had time. And pitcher made a good flip on that, but runner did not score. Good bunter by, like, Sanchez. Uh, in the past, we've had a couple of attempts at suicide squeezes that a bad pitch didn't get down. So they were looking at the safety squeeze there, and it just didn't work. So Sam Ortiz at the plate here. Coach's timeout. So 1-1 one, one count, one, one count here to uh, Sam Ortiz. Runners on second and third. Colby Christian on third. Uh. That'll be a pass ball, and the run scores. Wow. Man. Talk about a lucky break. Yeah, unlucky break. Brian Chambers here on the mound has just done great job 
Well, lucky break for the Tornadoes. Yeah, lucky break for Tornadoes, but unlucky break for uh, Chambers as he's pitched an outstanding game so far going into the bottom of the eighth. Fouled out of play, one-two well, count still to Ortiz. There are so many games that uh, Concordia has had which were in this same scenario, but, we, but it's reversed now for them, so – yeah, you've lost a lot of games or in this situation where you haven't been able to uh, to do some things and or you made the one little error. And now they have a one-run lead. So, yeah, leading three to two here in the bottom of the eighth. Now it just takes three outs for Brady Statler to come in and get out of the last inning and actually end up with the win. Oh, ground ball, one hopper. Ortiz really hit that good, but it pitcher retires him. Has tough break in this inning, and then a wild pitch, or I mean a pass ball. Scores the go-ahead run as Colby Christian scored. So three to two as we go to the top of the ninth inning. So we'll go to the top of the ninth here with Brady Statler on the mound. In the line for a win now here on uh, Senior Weekend, last home series for the Tornadoes. He'll be facing the five, six, seven hitters as Landon Prestige steps in. First plate appearance hits a line drive out towards left center. Missed uh, on a diving attempt by Zach Segris. Goes to the wall for a triple. And uh, since then, two strikeouts. Brady came in in the last inning to get out of the jam and got two strikeouts to end that. But he falls behind here to Prestige 3-0. Comes back with a strike. Right now, just looking to throw strikes and don't let the leadoff runner on base. Works back to even the count, three and two. Just stay in routine and throw the same pitch here as uh, he got back in the count. Strike three right down the middle. Good job by Statler to work back in there. See some excitement and some fired up out there from Dubois and Julian Swift out there as they uh, throw that ball around the horn from Sanchez. Brady Statler has faced three batters and three strikeouts coming out of the bullpen. Swing and miss by William Buford on the first pitch. Statler's got a little bit extra on it tonight. Oh, 
0-2 pitch, a little bit off the plate. Ball's hit towards Julian at short. He'll make the backhand little play over to Morrow for the second out of the inning. That brings up the third baseman, number nine, Taylor Griner. So two outs here. Taylor Griner steps to the plate. Facing Statler as Statler first pitch strike again. Oh, one pitch from Statler. These are the type of games early in the season that uh, tornadoes just weren't able to uh, do anything and come back and win. Got a little bit of help there on an air and a pass ball by uh, the Yellow Jackets, but Statler's came in and throwing strikes here. One, two counts. Brady Statler works with two outs. Foul ball back off the net. So Taylor Griner at the plate has a walk, single, and a fly out. One for two in this ball game as Statler comes set with a one-two pitch. Another foul back. Otto Franz delivering some baseballs to the home plate umpire here. As Brady Statler comes set. Two outs. Swing and miss, strike three. Brady Statler comes in, gets five outs, four strikeouts. Great job, picks up the win. Senior weekend, maybe his last performance at Gardner Boggs Field, and it's an excellent job as uh, Brady Statler comes in and just does an excellent job out of the bullpen. Great pitching performance also by Dakota Palmer, and the Tornadoes are able to uh, scrape three runs and win this ball game three to two and take first two games of the series and win the and, and, uh, and win clinch. Yeah, win the yeah. series. And they have now clinched a playoff spot in the ASC tournament for next weekend. So they'll be uh, – we'll play on Saturday for senior day, but we'll also uh, – looking forward to next Thursday as the Tornadoes will travel to Marshall. Well, it, it's nice for once to say they have found a creative way of winning a game instead of cre a creative way of losing a game. Yeah, great job there finding a way to close that out. Coming back, no runs. Didn't have a whole lot of life from the offense for the first seven innings of the ball game. And then you're able to get a couple guys on, scrape out a couple runs, took advantage of an error and a pass ball. But you're able to win this game 3-2 to two and clinch your spot in the playoffs, make it a little bit easier to relax on senior day. But... Also, uh, look forward a little bit, and great job by the team to have some heart and fight and, and get back in this. So, good job, and we'll uh, appreciate you joining us on the Big Daddy Media Network with Mike Dubois, Leland Freeman, and Chuck Licata. And Chuck's going to be play-by-play uh, uh, -play on uh, Senior Day on Saturday. Yeah, he'll be here Saturday for Senior Day. We'll do that before the broadcast. Be, uh, and I'll color commentary. Yeah, well. they'll do that a little bit early, so uh, keep a ear out for uh, time and what's going on. As I told, I told a lot of the players while I was setting up the equipment, I said, finish the season strong, guys. Yeah, but, definitely. I mean, that's what you wanted to see because now you're going to be going to the tournament, but what you wanted to see is uh, these guys – Pick up the wins. I mean, I, you're expected to beat this team. And, you know, it's nothing against having a couple tight games and being able to win these ball games because you lost your fair share of them earlier in the season. So, good job by picking up two wins today, both one-run ball games. But uh, took a lot of fight and stayed in it. So, I'm going to sign off here.